All right, all right, go ahead and grab a seat. Grab a seat. And uh, my name is Michael, one of the pastors here. And so, uh, so excited. Today we're celebrating 12 years as a church family. And so super excited to open up our space, invite uh, friends and family from near and far to come and celebrate with us. And we have these tablets we pass through the aisles. So Chelsea, if you grab those, Holly, and just kind of, if you're new here this morning, provide as much information as you want. We'll make it as easy as possible for you just to learn about what Jesus is doing in North Village Church and through North Village Church. And so those tablets are there to help. A couple of weeks ago, somebody said to me, they said, 12 years, you're celebrating 12 years. I, I, I thought it was longer than 12 years. And I, and I was like, it feels like it's been longer than 12 years, especially uh, this last year. Where I feel like we're like a 100-year-old uh, church after all we've navigated this last year. But super excited to be here today. You, if you're new here this morning, we usually just go through Scripture. We go through books of the Bible. Uh, but this morning, we're just going to celebrate. We're going to talk about our past. We're going to talk about where our where we are in our, in our present, and we're going to look at our future and talk about where our, our long-term goals of where we are going. So y'all come on in, y'all find a seat, and we're going to jump right into talking about our past, kind of where we've, where we've been. Our church family, we started in my, in my living room at 4107 Everest Lane. There was about 15, 17 people sitting around a, a table, not really sure what we were getting ourselves into, but we all rallied around our, our vision at North Village Church. And you see it on the slide, just that North Village Church is a family, that early on we were just super committed that we wanted to actually live life together, not just kind of show up on a Sunday and wave and smile, but actually get involved in, e in each other's lives, and that we wanted to place ourselves under the leadership of Jesus and his word, that he was the authority in our lives, and we were all coming under him. And then what we believed is that if we were in close relationship with one another, in submission to Jesus, that we would experience this thriving compassion for others, that it would move us to chase after every man, woman, and child in greater Austin to experience the life-transforming power of Jesus. So that's our that's our vision as a church family. That's what, we've been, that's what we've been chasing after. And then every three years, you see that rotation. That's just That comes out of our vision of just Jesus at the center. And then we rotate the next year of our, our relationships with one another. And then we rotate the next year to the community. And then we just do that every three years to kind of keep us focused on our, our vision. And this last year, we've been focused on our relationships with one another. Right? Hasn't it been so important to have healthy relationships with one another? Like now more than ever, right? We want to make sure we're keeping healthy relationships with one another. My, this last week, my, uh, my family, we did a kind of like a blitz of New Mexico. We took off on Friday. It was four days, 1,600 miles in a four-door four sedan. We hit uh, Carlsbad, Roswell. It's the first time my kids learned about aliens. And then we went up to Rio Dosa. We did White Sands. We did El Paso. It was just four days. And it was awesome. But four days, 1,600 miles in a four-door sedan. Like, we started getting frustrated with each other, right? I mean, we had fun with each other, but we also started kind of picking on each other. And you start getting annoyed with each other. You start pointing out things like, why do you chew your food that way? Like, do you, do you have, can you chew your food one time? Can you breathe differently? My kids were actually, could you stop breathing that way? And I'm just like, well, that's kind of mean, right? But when you're, in a, when you're in a car together for that long, like you start getting frustrated with each other. And that's what the last 12 months has kind of been like, right, for our nation, but also for the local church, right? Like, we love each other, but we've all experienced like some serious volatility and tension, and, and it's easy to get frustrated with one another. But what I've noticed, when we talk about our road trip, like just a week later, do you know what we sit around the table? You know what we laugh about? We laugh about all those frustrating things. We laugh about all those annoying things. We're like, I can't believe, remember when you and you did that? Why do you do that? And we laugh and we point the finger at each other and because it's because we're family. In the same way, like when we say we're committed to being family, that's what we're talking about. Like if, you're, if you've been here, if you're new here, that's what we're committed to is that we're wanting to build family-like relationships with one another. 
and that we're confident that we're going to sit around the table. Maybe today, maybe at our lunch today, at our barbecue today, we're going to sit around the table and we're going to laugh and we're going to tell stories about that post on Facebook and like that thing that you said and can you believe back in April and you voted what like and we're going to laugh and we're going to tell stories and the reason we're able to do that is because we're committed to being a family a church family resisting the temptation to cut one another off pushing each other away and instead leaning into the gospel leaning into one another That's what we've been about the last 12 months. Let's talk about the present, right? Where we are in the present. You see in our our diagram, right, we're going to move to the community. We want to move to kind of upward and outward. We want to lift our eyes to look around, right? We want to look around. We we don't want to be so engrossed in our relationships with one another that we forget about the people around us. And so these next 12 months, like our president, we're going to be drilling into what does it look like to look around and, and, and look ahead. And, and, and we really got that all out of John chapter 4, verses 31 to 38. So I'll read, you follow along with me. When we say look around, it comes from John chapter 4, verses 31 to 38. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, that's Jesus, saying, Rabbi, eat. But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, no one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his works. Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look. Look around, look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. Already he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life. So that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. What? You're going to sow and reap at the same time? For in this case, the saying is true, one sows, another reaps. I I, I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. So in the context of John chapter 4, it's a famous passage in Scripture where we see the woman at the well, right? The disciples are hungry. He sends, Jesus sends the disciples into town to get some food. Jesus stays back at the well, at Jacob's well. He gets into a conversation with this woman who's been through five marriages. She's coming to the well at the heat of the day. She feels rejected by the community. She feels rejected by God, and she sees Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm not rejecting you. I see you. Right? I'm the Messiah. I'm the one you're looking for. Her eyes are open. She runs into town. It's this amazing story. Right? In verse 31, the disciples have returned from 7-Eleven. And they tell Jesus, hey, eat some food. Verse 32, Jesus says, I have food to eat that you know not of. What? Jesus is talking about the spiritual conversation he just had with the woman at the well. Does that make sense? That that shouldn't make sense, right? It didn't make sense uh, to the disciples, right? That, That Jesus has been feasting on a spiritual conversation. And as a result, he found physical nourishment so that Jesus says, I'm good. This completely confuses the disciples. In verse 33, they ask, nobody brought Jesus food, did they? Like nobody snuck him a Hot Pocket, did they? Like is he wearing a fanny pack? Why is he not hungry? The assumption is if you are physically hungry, that you should have a physical food. But Jesus says in verse 34, My food is to do the will and work of my heavenly Father. Therefore, lift up your eyes and look. The fields are white for harvest. Because there are women at the well conversations all around us. That's what what he's drawing out there. He's like, "You, you didn't till the soil. You didn't sow the seeds. But there's a harvest that's plentiful. And that's applied to our life as well today. I mean, think about where we are right now in 2021. I mean, life is chaotic. 
Right? No matter where you fall on the spectrum of life, there is a volatility. The ground beneath our feet is shaking, right? If you, if you feel like you're not operating at 100%, nobody is, right? Every person has a fragment of their brain wondering, am I going to get COVID today and die? Like we're all, like that's the reality of what we're walking through every day. And what do we do in the chaos of our day is we turn towards physical nourishment. Right, the way they call it, COVID-19, gaining 19 pounds, right, because we've been feasting on bluebell ice cream. We've watched everything there is to watch on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Like, we're like, I don't know what else to watch. I've watched everything. We've taken the naps. We've done the, you know, the hobbies around the house. We've done all that. And I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but, like, that hasn't brought me the nourishment that my soul is longing for. Right? I mean, do you remember before COVID? Do you remember before COVID we used to fantasize? Like we'd be so busy, so chaotic in life that we would fantasize about just taking like a week just to veg out. Did you ever do this? Like sometimes I'd find myself like I wouldn't mind getting a little cold. Like I don't want to get like sick hospital, but just enough to leave me in the bed so I could just kind of veg out and take a nap and watch. Like that used to be like that was like, oh, that would be awesome. Like that's all we've been doing since April 2020. And like it's not nourishment to our soul. Therefore, John chapter 4, and Jesus saying, lift up your eyes. Look, look around, right? There is, a, there is a hunger in our soul. Like we just need to acknowledge that. There is a hunger in our soul. And I'm not talking about just the people out there. I'm talking about like in this room, there is a hunger in our soul in the physical trappings of this world are not going to satisfy. John chapter 4, Jesus is speaking to us. Lift up your eyes. Look around. There are women at the well, spiritual conversations type taking place all around us. So when we say look around, like just to try to get specific, we say continue. We say this next 12 months, we're going to lift our eyes, we're going to look around. Continue means that we want to continue to look out for one another in our church family. Right? That we don't want to get so excited about the people out there that we forget about. Our relationships with one another are still important. These last 12 months have fragmented our church family, our culture. And we like, where, where is everybody? How is everybody doing? Right? It's not just the pastors that are texting and, and emailing like, hey, you doing okay? But one another. That we're looking across the room, we're looking in our community groups, we're looking out for one another like, hey, we're continuing to ask, are you okay? It's crazy right now, are you okay? We want to look around and we want to care. We want to do a great job of caring for those new people who come into our community. Those new people who show up to our community groups, who walk in on a Sunday morning, that we're not going to have it all together, that we're going to feel a little bit fragmented, but to the best of our ability, we want to be able to say, hey, this is North Village Church. This is what our kids' ministry looks like. This is what a community group looks like. We want to care for people, new people in our community. Just a couple of weeks ago, somebody said to me, they said that, that they they're new to our church money, uh, church family in the last six months. And they said to me, I've never felt more connected to Jesus than I have than in North Village Church. And I said to me, that's, I said to him, I said, that's God's grace. I'm like, we're, we're the most fragmented we've ever been. We're probably the most unfriendly we've ever been. If somebody talked to you today, that's a big deal, right? It's just, it's just a hard time to navigate this day. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're continuing to care as people walk through our doors. This third one, this last one, we want to challenge. If you look at every one of your chairs, on the front side you see continue care, challenge, and on the back side you see three circles. We just finished this sermon series called Three Circle Gospel Presentation. And our, our challenge to our church family is that, that we would know how to share the gospel Clearly and concise through these three circles. Right? There's all these questions happening in our culture today, and we are not going to be able to put a bow 
on every one of these questions taking place in our culture today. But we can speak to the most important question going on in our world today. And that's Jesus. And whether it's in 30 seconds or three months that we would be able to walk somebody through these three circles. So our, our, our focus this next year is that we would have 75 men, women, and children that would be able to turn that card in this time next year. And be able to say, look, I, I've heard the three circles. I've shared the three circles with somebody in North Village Church. And I've shared the three circles with somebody outside of North Village Church. And that we would just put them on the wall. And as you, as you get them, you just turn them in and we just tack them on the wall so that we would be a church family that knows how to engage these conversations in our world today. We say, look around, it's going to be there every Sunday. Yeah. Continue, care, challenge. That's what we're talking about. John chapter 4, lifting our eyes to look around, acknowledging there's a physical hunger going on. There's a spiritual hunger going on. The only answer is through Jesus. We want to invite our church family to respond to that. I, mean, I think now more than ever, there's, there's opportunities for spiritual conversations, for women at the well conversations. From Monday to Saturday, there's more pastoral moments than would ever take place on a Sunday morning in our church family. Right through our neighborhood, through the workplace, through school, through classmates, through Zoom, through extended family. There are life and death conversations happening all around us. There's pastoral moments all around us. And that's what we're inviting our church family to lift up our eyes. Look around. That's the invitation. Now, the only way that, 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 that look around doesn't just remain like a sticker on a stage is if every one of us, you're not responding to me. You're responding to God's word. That every one of us would go before Jesus and say, Jesus, what does it look like for me personally to look around? I just, I just want to continue to kind of just double-click on it to try to make it as, as practical for us as, 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 as possible. When, when we say look around, these are just some ideas of what it might look like practically for us in our, in our church family. We're going to organize a teacher breakfast or a lunch here at the new location. We're at Burnett Middle School, Pillow Elementary, McCallum High School. Like, it's never been more challenging to be a teacher than it is right now. And what an opportunity for our church family to lift up our eyes and look around and try to become an advocate for the teachers in our community. Organize a Valentine's banquet just to kind of raise awareness for a specific need in the community. We want to use the space for things like that. We want to research community needs, the Department of Human uh, Relations. Our, one of our elders just said to us last week, there's orphans in Austin sleeping in offices right now because they don't have enough beds for them. We can't meet every need that's in our community, but we want to be made aware. We want to lift up our eyes and look around. We want to do workshops. Right? Just open up this space. Maybe only 10, 15 people come. Make it available to the community on felt needs, games, hobbies, and just say, hey, the space is open. Let's utilize it. Host a, a social night. Do something fun here, invite our friends to come be a part of it. Host a prayer tent. What if we did that? That would be, that'd be wild, wouldn't it? Just set up a chair and a tent Monday to Friday and just say free prayer. If you come by, just pray for people. I did that in New York City one time. Got together with a group of people. We prayed for people in Central Park. People would come to tears as they would hear people pray for them. Just make that available in our community. Host a karaoke night. I know you guys like to sing. Research sex slavery, how it's taking place in, in our city. It's not just in third world countries. It's in our city. We just want to become more aware, more familiar. We pray every month. Walk around this, this area for an hour. Man, come be a part of that with us. Invite somebody to your community group to Sunday morning. Invite them 
Invite them into your home and, and share a meal. Like, you know, we're not asking you to do all these things. We're not really even asking you to add things to your calendar. It's, it's more so, where are you already? Acts 17, determined, he's determined the times and places in which we live. We're already there. So it's simply lifting up our eyes, looking around for those opportunities. That, that's, that's our focus as a church family. That's what we're inviting you to do is to kind of lean into that opportunity with us. That there would be spiritual conversations in our church family that we don't even know about. They're not happening because a pastor asked you to do it. It's just happening. That's what we're praying for over this next year. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the next five years, right? We, uh, we signed a five-year lease with this space. Somebody asked me, did we buy this building? I'm like, well, we might one day, but right now uh, we're just leasing it. We have a five-year Lease. So I just wanted to share with you as our, our elders get together, I mean, when we look at what we are praying for the Lord to do over these next five years, let me just walk you through some of those things that come to mind. The first one is that we would have a clear leadership development pipeline, that it's proven, that we, we would be able to see people walk through the door Multiple examples, multiple types of people, no matter where they are in their, in their spiritual journey. And there would be a, a pattern, a proven pipeline to see people grow and mature in Jesus. That they would go from strangers to the Lord to dangerous for the Lord, right? From, from our neighbors to the nations. That's, that's where a proven leadership development pipeline. We're praying that that can happen by the end of 2022, Community groups, by the end of 2023, we're praying that we would have 20 community groups. We have seven right now. So that's in like a little over two years that we would triple in the number of community groups that we have. That's what we're praying for. By the end of 2023, that we would have 20 community groups. How does that happen? The only way that happens is if we're looking around. <laughs> The only way that happens if people are coming to faith in Jesus. The only way that happens is if there's a proven leadership development pipeline that's raising up new community group leaders, right? The third thing we're praying for is staff. We have two full-time staff right now. By the end of 2023, we're praying that we would have a full-time worship leader and a full-time youth leader by the end of 2023. And it's, it's not so that we can just grow the name of North Village Church, but that as people are walking through our doors, as people, as the Lord is entrusting people with us, we want to do a good job of caring for them and equipping them and empowering them and unleashing them to go just spread God's grace all over our city. The fourth one is global missions. I mean, I just can't stress enough, we're, we're not intoxicated with growing the name of North Village Church and getting people to come and listen to me. Like, we want to see God's kingdom spread in our city and outside of our city so that we would, by the end, really this summer 22, and, and no later than summer 23, we're praying that we could send a team of 10 or 12 people into a cross-cultural experience. Right now, we're strategically partnering with Central America and South America, with people that are starting churches in Central America and South America. And it's great that we send money. We've been doing that for years, but we don't only want to send money. We want to be able to send people. And so I'm asking you now to start praying. Is Jesus calling you to be one of those people? Maybe this summer or next summer that is sent out on a two-week trip into a cross-cultural experience and global missions. This fifth one is church planting. I mean, we are highly committed to church planting. It is the avenue by which the gospel is communicated to the world and it's starting new churches. And by God's grace, we've been able to help uh, start two churches in Austin. Can you believe that? Our little church has started two other churches in Austin, right? And we, we send money. We've been able to provide training. You remember Ben Brummett? Ben Brummett did his first sermon here at North Village Church. We sat through that, that first sermon. Yeah, we, we, we remember that. We put in, we put in, the, but our dream is not just to train, it's not just to send 
money, but that we would be able to send people. Like we told Ben, Ben, we can't send people. You take people, you're, we're not going to have any people. But our dream is that there, we would have eight, ten families by the end of 2025 that would be able to go out, that we not only found a person, trained a person, had money for that person, and then sent them out with people that might be in this room right now. That's what we're praying for over these next five years. Let me talk about this last one. This last one is going to take us into 2030, and it's, it's a little crazy, but it's, we just call it spiritual care. And it's our dream by the end of 2030 is that we would be able to have somebody from North Village Church on every block in 78757. That there would be a person from North Village Church on every block that would say, hey, I'll take responsibility for this block. Right, we know from experience and demographic research that most of the people in 78757, they're not looking for a worship service. They're not looking to hear from Michael Dennis. That's okay. But what they are looking for is for somebody to embody the name of Jesus. And that there would be somebody from our church family that would be a physical representation, salt and light, on every block in 78757. It says, I know who these people are. I know their names. I know their story. I'm praying for them. And when the Lord opens opportunity, that they would be having those spiritual opportunities. That's what we're praying for. That's what we mean when we say spiritual care. Over the next five years, these six things, that's what we're praying for in our church family. I want to invite you to pray with us. And if you're sitting there and if you're thinking, Michael, how does that happen? It's easy to stand on a stage and just talk about 2020, big, big picture. Like It's all future. How does it happen? Where do we start? Right there. All six of those things, it all comes down to is just a, a gathering of men, women, and children who are committed. So I'll look around. I'll lift up my eyes, and, I, and I'll, I'll take into account who I'm sitting next to in class. Who lives across the street from me? Who's in my extended family? Looking for those spiritual conversations. That's, that's where it all starts. He's going to guide us and tweak us along the way, but that's what we're aiming for. If you look at this next slide, it all costs money. If you look at that first column, we end our, our financial budget at the end of September. There's a bare bones budget to get us into this space. So this next column, as we start in October, I mean, we're just trying to stretch it a little bit. You need to know every one of those dollars is to lift us upward and outward. And so as we talk about the vision on the macro and the micro, you got to know all that stuff costs money. And so I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you to, to give financially, like unashamedly, that each of us would go before Jesus and say, hey, what does it look like to lay aside the comforts of this world and to invest in his kingdom, to invest in the eternal, that we would see these things become a reality. And, I, and I'm confident that if we do, it's going to happen. I, I'm just incredibly optimistic about where we are right now. Like as a church, as a city, as a, as a country, and I, I get it, it's, I'm not naive. I, I, I know some of us are scared. Right? There's fear. There's COVID is real. Right? There's fear of like white people are going to get us or the police are going to get us or the Democrats are going to get us or the Republicans or the communists. I mean, there's lots of things to be fearful about. I get it. And maybe some of us are fatigued, right? Just tired. I get that. But I'm incredibly optimistic, and I'm not an optimist. I'm not that person. I'm not an optimistic person, but I, I just find myself incredibly optimistic. It's not even about our building. I mean, this building is nice. The space is great, but that's not what gets me excited. What gets me excited is just about where, where our nation is. All right? I, mean, I think other countries have experienced this rumbling below their feet. Other nations, they, they've lived it for decades, and, and, and we're starting to experience it. And it just gets me real excited because I see, I see the spirit of God. He's just tilling up the soil. 
right? All this rumbling beneath our feet is the tilling of the soil that seeds are being cast, right, and sown. I think the Lord's going to use it to bring a harvest. Because think about it practically. I mean, for the, for the longest time, I mean, since the 90s, if you had questions about God, if you had questions about the Bible, you didn't need to go talk to a pastor. You didn't need to go talk to a Christian. You, you know, you, you, just, you just go to Alta Vista. You know, you go to the internets. You went to the dial-up. You eventually went to Yahoo and Google and YouTube. If you have questions about God, you just go look for it on the internet. But now with what's going on in our nation, in our culture, in 2021, information on a website's not enough. People aren't just asking questions for information. People are asking questions like we're asking questions because we're wondering what does it look like? like we're not just wondering the information, we have the answer. We're wondering what does it practically look like to live out that faith? That's the beauty. That's the potential of the local church is because in the local church, you get to see bone on bone. Right? And then what she read, you get to see bone, flesh on flesh. You get to see, like, how does it work? How do these two people who come from two politically different backgrounds, how do they sit across the table from each other and are, and are gracious to one another and wrestle with the questions of our day? How does it happen? The local church has the opportunity to put that on display. That is what's possible for us. And it just makes me excited. It's going to be messy, but it's going to be really exciting. Just last Friday, my family, we were sitting around the table with somebody, and, and my daughter was talking about our church, and she was talking about just the sweetness of the people in our church. And, and, this, and this person said, well, it sounds like you have something pretty special in that church because you don't see a lot of that sweetness in other relationships in life that's what's possible for us that's what we're celebrating and it's an opportunity to see how this faith works itself out practically that's what we're inviting you into listen if you've never met Jesus, if you've never began a relationship with Jesus, I invite you to do that right now. I mean, every one of us here, there's no way we can navigate this turmoil of our day. All of us are invited to turn to Jesus. You're not smart enough. You're not, you're not, you're not good looking enough. You're not athletic enough. Right? You're not going to be able to do it. The only answer is Jesus. Won't you turn to him? Will you pray with me? Close your eyes. Well, Father in heaven, I, I first and foremost confess that I, I can't do it today. I, I, I don't know how to, to understand everything that's happening today. I don't know how to navigate that at the familial level. I definitely don't know how to do it at the church level, but, but you do. You know exactly how to take the most chaotic things in our lives and to work out your purpose and your plan. So I pray that, that every one of us here today, that our eyes would be lifted to you. And when we talk about looking around, that we would remember first and foremost that you, you look around. And you saw us. And you called us to yourself. That you breathed life into us. That you washed us with forgiveness and healing. And you cleansed us. You made us new. So, Father, help us to walk in that today. Help us to, to celebrate, to laugh, and to tell stories, and to run. Maybe confess. Maybe apologize. But ultimately, all of us turn to you. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.